So I want to thank Judy Cop for uh, bringing this guy to my attention. This guy's awesome. Wait until you see what um, this guy's got to say. His name is Mark Robinson, and he makes. Um, he was. Uh, I guess he was. He was at a city council meeting in um, in North Carolina somewhere, right? And uh, he he makes he makes he makes a case for the Second Amendment that's just going to blow you away when you when you listen to what he what he says, right? He goes to the um, to his local city council. Uh, meeting, and he, um, well, you, you'll you'll hear what he said. I'm gonna, I'll just let's little, little listen, um, listen to him, and then uh, I'll I'll pop uh, right right back in, and we'll talk about it because this guy is like this guy is awesome. This guy's finger on the button, right? The only issue I would take with him that he's doing it at a, um, you know, a city council meeting, a city, you know, I, I'm I'm at the point now where I don't think that's. I don't think we need to ask politicians anymore. We need to tell them, right? We need to send message where we're, we're in charge, right? and you, you're 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 going to do what we tell you. You're going to get the hell out of office. So check this guy out. You're going to love this. My name's Mark Robinson. I live at 4015 Sassafras Court. That's right here in Greensboro. I've lived in Greensboro all my life. Uh, I didn't have time to write a fancy speech. I didn't have time to, you know, I didn't have the the resource of a. English teacher to sit down and write a speech with at school today and be you know bought over here or practice or anything. What I really came down here for is this. Uh, I've heard a whole lot of people in here talking tonight about this group and that group and domestic violence and blacks, these minorities and that minority. What I want to know is when are you all going to start standing up for the majority? So he's there telling and them they're, he's listening to a city council meeting and he all he's hearing is social issues, all social issues. Uh, and he said, you know, when are you going to stand up for the majority, all right? Uh, what are we, what are we, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's in defense of the minority. And, but uh, he makes a valid point there. All right, he makes a valid point. Uh, let's just, I'll, I'll try to shut up. Let's just listen to the guy. Here's who the majority is. I'm the majority. I'm a law-abiding citizen who's never shot anybody, never committed a serious crime, never committed a felony. I've never done anything like that. But it seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame, put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right, constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white. You want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. I don't think Rod Serling could come up with a better script. It does not make any sense. The law-abiding citizens of this community and many communities around this country, we're the first ones taxed and the last ones considered and the first ones punished when things like this happens because our rights are the ones that are being taken away. That's the reason why I came down here today. Gun show or no gun show, NRA or no NRA. I'm here to stand up for the law-abiding citizens of this community because I'm going to tell you that what's going to happen. You can take the guns away from us all you want to. You all write a law, I follow the law, I'll bring my guns down here, I'll turn them in. But here's what's going to happen. The Crips and the Bloods on the other side of town, they're not going to turn their guns in. They're going to hold on to them. And what's going to happen when you have to send the police down there to go take them? The police can barely enforce the law as it is. It's what I see, we demonize the police, criminalize and, and, and vilify the police, and we make the criminals into victims. And we're talking about restricting guns? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that when the police department's already hamstrung? You're not going to be able to go down here and take these guns from these criminals. So the criminals are going to hold on to their guns. They're still going to have them. They're still going to break in my house, and they're still going to shoot me with them. And guess who's going to be the one that suffers? It's going to be me. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it is not going to happen without a fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean shots fired. I don't mean fist thrown. I mean, I'm going to come down here to this city council and raise hell just like these loonies from the left do until you listen to the majority of the people in this city. And I am the majority. The majority of the people in this city are law abiding and they follow the law and they want their constitutional right to be able to bear, to bear arms. They want to be able to gun sh go to the gun show and buy a hunting rifle or sport a sport rifle. There are no military grade weapons sold, sold, uh, sold at the 
a gun show. An AR-15 is not a military-grade weapon. Anybody that would go into combat with an AR-15 is a fool. It's a semi-automatic 22 rifle. You'd be killed in 15 minutes in combat with that thing. So we need to dispel all these myths, and we need to drop all this, all this division that we got going on here. Because the bottom line is, when that Second Amendment was written, whether the framers liked it or not, they wrote it for everybody. And I am everybody. And the law abiding citizens of this city are everybody. And we want our rights, and we want to keep our rights. And by God, we're going to keep them. Come hell or high water. You know, that's the guy I want to be a friend with, man. That guy is just a constitutionalist, right? He spelled it out. They, they said that, you know, the founding fathers sat down, they wrote the Constitution, and they, they put these amendments in for a reason, right? He wants his rights. He's not talking about, he's not talking about like, like uh, do, you do me a favor. He's talking about a constitutional right, right, in America. If it's not arms, if it's... Well, let's talk about the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Are we going to go after that next? But he's a constitutionalist, you know, and you watch him. He never says Republican or Democrat or left. He, you know, he's, <laughs> he called the loony, the loony left. That's kind of funny. But they are loony. They go down there, you know, they go to these city hall meetings, and, they, and all they do is talk about social issues. Social issues are going to change the world, right? Social issues, they're going to stop the bombs falling in Syria. They're going to stop the Democrats from stealing elections. They're going to stop, you know, they're going to stop everything, right? It's just as long as we could use, as long as we could pick the bathroom we want to use, and everything's going to be all right, right? Good. <laughs> right? So anyway, I hope you guys like that. That guy is, uh, that guy's a hero, right? We need more of those people, but not... Get him out on the street, man. Get him out where it's where people could see him, you know. Get a YouTube channel for that guy, you know. Well, you're wasting your time. You go down to city council, a bunch of jack-offs, right? <laughs> They'll do anything. Right? We've got to take charge, people. We've got to take charge of our, our democracy. Stop stop making pleas to, to politicians and, and courts and, and court jesters and judges. They're all full of shit, right? It's, it's we the people. It's we the people. That's what I'm talking about. Peace out.